Hello guys, my name is Anna and I vlog daily from Ukraine since the start of brutal Russian invasion. If you support Ukraine and you want to know more about what is life in my country during these challenging times, please subscribe. This is the easiest way to demonstrate your solidarity, but it works effectively in spreading the information and attracting attention to my country that still desperately needs your help on the way to our joint victory. Today I want to warn you about some dangerous symptoms that I observe and I will start with sharing of my personal history and my pre-war mistakes that were based on normalcy bias. Well, I was born in Ukraine, that's my country, and um, I went to school in the times of independent Ukraine and never ever I believed that I would go through something similar as the Second World War. That there are things in my city that can produce the sound of the air raid, that I can hear explosions close to my home, that I can see destroyed villages and cities all over Ukraine, that I will learn about the deaths of so many Ukrainians just because they are Ukrainians. I believed all of that ended with the Second World War when uh, people saw sins, tragedy, misery of uh, all that, and it will never happen again. That's why we have this really beautiful slogan, never again. But we have Russia as a neighbor, and it uses a totally different message, which says we can repeat. And they started terrorizing Ukraine somewhere actually in the middle of 2000s, by trying to annex it silently. And this hybrid war was pretty, pretty um, dangerous because many did not notice wrong things happening. Various Russian citizens as uh, ministers of defense or minister of education who tries to edit some things in Ukrainian history books, to erase some Ukrainian authors from a literary program, and so on and so forth. So the plan was similar to the Belarus one to annex Ukraine silently and the world will remain safe and the world will not pay any attention to what is happening because Ukraine has always been a part of Russia. That's what they said. But Ukrainians are different. They are freedom-loving people and they always react when they see that some cross, uh, that some red lines were crossed. And Russia crossed a lot of them with the president Yanukovych, for example, who was totally pro-Russian, wanted to stop our European integration and people reacted. It all uh, finished with the revolution of dignity and Russian annexation of Crimea. They were using a moment and of course they were preparing for that for decades. It's not nothing, it's not something that happened overnight. And eight years of anti-terroristic operation, many people who died, many uh, volunteering initiatives that appeared and Ukrainians realizing that we have to fight for our freedom, independence and it's not given for granted. Hybrid war continued with various uh, pro-Russian movements that Putin financed, with fraud during elections, with hackers' attack on Ukrainian bank, railway, airports and other things. And uh, what is worse, this hybrid war took place on the informational field where Russia tried to persuade global political leaders, people in different countries via TV programs, via various cultural uh, programs that Ukraine wants to be with Russia. Ukraine is similar to Russia and many believed because like we are a smaller country, we don't have uh, that much uh, platforms to speak about that. And because of this um, image that Russia is a very strong culture and many people loved listening to it. Russia is fake from uh, up to bottom. We see how many myths of Russia were ruined after the start of this full-scale war. Russia is not the second strongest army in the world. It's the second strongest army in Ukraine. If you agree, please subscribe. Uh, also, uh, Putin does not control everything. We've already witnessed the coup of Prihozhin. We see that many are dissatisfied and how pathetically he looks with his buttocks chicks in a bunker and many other things. But 
uh, when reading newspapers about uh, the danger of full-scale invasion, when um, reading and watching various uh, addresses, including of American presidents, that this may happen, I chose not to believe. And you, my beautiful subscribers, taught me that this tendency is known as normalcy bias. I have even put down a definition of what that is. So normalcy bias is a tendency to already underestimate the likelihood of something evil or negative coming based on your previous experience and logics. So my normalcy bias work that way. I did not see any reason for Russia to attack Ukraine. We were not trying to attack them as they sometimes claim. We are not Nazis. Uh, we are not, we were not that militarized as we are now. And thank you for that, dear allies. Also, uh, there were no secret bio laboratories and NATO was not really eager to accept us. And unfortunately, it is not eager to accept us now. So there were no dangers for Russia. There was just the irrational idea of Putin to restore Soviet Union and he needs Ukraine. It's a vital part of his image of the Russian Empire. Uh, by the way, um, there is a very important argument that I often use in conversations with others. Why Ukraine can easily imagine its future without Russia. Actually, that's the kind of future we are fighting for. And Russia cannot do that. Russia as an empire is only possible with Ukraine as its part. So we are now fighting against the empire monster ghost. And with your support, we must win, I believe. So <clears throat> my normalcy bias led to the fact that I was choosing the articles, the interviews, which claimed, well, Russia can attack, but in the eastern part where Ukrainians had their um, army, we were better trained. We used this eight years since 2014 to develop our army. But it happened in every city. Explosions were all over Ukraine. They were moving really quickly. And I realized that my normalcy bias, the belief that others are normal just like I am, or at least they read and lies and they act according to some rational uh, ideas or logical things, they don't work with Russia. Why am I speaking about that? Many countries right now, like Poland, like the Baltic countries, um, they are under this normalcy bias. They send uh, more troops to the borders with Belarus, where Wagner soldiers are. They train their soldiers, but still deep down inside, they believe it is impossible because they are NATO countries. I also believe that it is impossible. I have to stress, I believe Russia will not attack NATO directly, but it can. Because it is illogical and it is irrational. And we have to take into account this fact too. Um, they can act really quickly, for example, with Suwalki Corridor. It's not a big part of uh, uh, Polish and um, close to Polish, Poland and Baltic, it's not a big territory, it can happen really quickly and I'm very much afraid that those not very uh, strong, um, peace-loving, very peace-loving leaders of NATO may say that let's see and watch what happens because if we react, if we start bombing Russian troops, they can use nuclear weapons and that will lead to escalation. So let's not escalate and observe what happens because this territory is not that big. I don't say it will happen, but I say it may happen. So don't let your normalcy bias stop you from preparing. But of course, this preparing should not be crazy because I often have comments like, Ukrainians, you were warned, you should have evacuated from your country before Putin attacked. This is a stupid advice, I'm sorry. Uh, where do you can you imagine the whole country living its territory and then what giving it to russia not protecting your homes then would you accept millions of ukrainians until the war started on what reason 
we have war anxiety it does not work like that you cannot buy enough food supply you cannot like uh solve all your problems and you cannot leave your country giving it to russian orcs so you can never be fully prepared to war because war is very crazy very dynamic very brutal uh, but of course there are things that you can think about like where your money are or what is the place you can escape if you need uh, your documents you know we all have to go our to go uh, suitcases uh, luckily I change clothes in it every season and I haven't used it yet in my semi-dangerous zone but uh, and most importantly when your country wants to prepare spend more money on weapons, uh, spend more money on uh, soldiers, don't protest. Don't let your normalcy bias make you believe that Russia will attack everyone, Ukraine, someone else, but not you. Russia is a monster. It's irrational. It's like a rabid dog. You cannot predict what may happen. So don't let your normalcy um, create this false feeling of security. Because like... Uh, before the Second World War, people believed that the League of Nations is working. I believe that United Nations can do a lot or that NATO will say something stronger in the answer to Putin when he says we will nuke London. They will say we will nuke Moscow. They don't say it. They say we will apply article. They are not afraid of the word article. They are afraid of the world word nuclear bomb as we do, but they are not afraid of the world of the word. I'm sorry, article. Remember that. Uh, thank you so much for buying me coffees, becoming my patrons. Subscribe to my Instagram, Twitter, Discord, threads, and introduce yourself to our beautiful cups, t-shirts, uh, cultural heritage collection and fighter raccoons. Uh, the link to our shop is below this video. But most importantly, think about Ukraine, talk about Ukraine, don't get tired. Slava Ukraini!